Hi guys, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how to create a spreadsheet that will perform a Chebyshev's theorem calculation to determine the minimum percent of data within an interval or the maximum percent of data that might appear outside of an interval. So um, I'm going to quickly do some cosmetic things here. I want the, you know, the item to look nice. So for example, I'm going to maybe take these five cells and I click this merge and center. So now I have like one big cell and in that big cell I can type in the name of the formula or the theorem, Chebyshev's theorem. And then, you know, it's a little small, hard to read, so maybe I'll make it font size 20. And maybe also I'll change up the fill here. I'm going to fill it with blue and then I'm going to change the font to white. Okay, so I like the way that looks. And again, I could select any fill color I want for that cell. Um, you know, if I preferred uh, maybe purple or something, that's fine. Um, I like the blue though, for so whatever reason, I feel like it looks more professional. And then again, I could change the, the font color here to anything I want, but I like the white. Okay, so let's go with, you know, what we need for the formula. We're going to need to enter a mean. We'll need a standard deviation for the formula. We're going to want to have an interval, right? So for the interval, I can put something like, you know, lower limit and the upper limit, right? So if I was, you know, creating this for um, myself, I could use any shorthand I want. If I'm creating it for an audience that's less sophisticated, you know, maybe I would spell this out a little more clearly, but you know, I'm gonna assume that people know um, what components they need to calculate the interval, and, or not the interval rather, but the um, the percent of data within an interval. So you're going to need an interval. That's where the lower and upper limit come in, and obviously you need a mean and standard deviation. Okay, so here these will just be the input cells where I put this information, and again I can you know do things like make this bold so it stands out somewhat, right? If I want to do that, that's fine. Okay, and in fact maybe I want to even um, put some borders here so I can select this border option, right? So I highlighted the four things and I can say put, you know, borders everywhere, all borders. And this is going to create, you know, the outline to give us an idea of where the input should go. So now I could, you know, for example, just type anything I want in here, like 100 for the mean, 15 for the standard deviation, and then make up an interval like 130 and 70, right? So, oh, I put that backwards, sorry. I meant to say 70 and 130. Okay, so there we have the input. And then from here, I can have a location for the answers. I can either put it here, put it here. Um, however you want to do it is fine. Um, so perhaps maybe down here, I will say something like um, results. So again, I merge those two cells and I click results, right? Or I write results. And then here I can, again, if I want to put labels, I can fill this in, change the font to white. And then under here, I can say at least, and here at most. All right, and then if I want to, I can add like a note to anything I want here. For example, I just want to show you how you can do this. So I click this cell, I can go under all sorts of things, but there's review here. So under here, I can click review, and then I can add a note. And in the note, I can say new note. And in here, I can type in a message, right? I can say something like um, this is the minimum. Per, uh, I will say percent because I'm going to use a percent here, percent of data. So this is the minimum percent of data inside the interval, the given interval, period. Okay, so now I have a note. And when I hover over this, you see it'll tell me what it means. This is the minimum percent of data inside the given interval. And then here for the at most part, I can say, okay, let me put some notes here. I'll add another note and I'll say, this is the maximum amount of data outside of the interval. Okay, so now I have two notes that explain what these answers are, and then I'll have these cells for the results. And again, maybe I'll make this have, if I go back to home and go here, I can click this borders and make it have some borders that way we have the results here. Okay, now from here I want to enter the actual formula, right? So this is where I want the minimum um, percentage to appear. And the way to do that is I need to start by hitting equals like we always have to do to enter a function. And then I can just plug in the formula, right? So 
I'm going to put a parenthesis here. I'm going to say 1 minus 1 divided by, it's supposed to be k squared, where k is the uh, number of standard deviations that you have above or below the mean. So I need to calculate that. Um, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the k or put the k over here in a formula. Okay, So I'm going to make this cell the formula for k. But I won't have this yet in my formula, so I'm just going to do that cell squared. So this is 1 minus 1 over k squared, or in this case, the cell that would be there. Close it up, and then multiply by 100. Now here's the thing. This is going to give me perhaps a non-ending, non-terminating decimal, so I can do something about that in a moment. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, it's saying divide by 0 here because it's telling me that there's a 0 value here. All right, so let's calculate what k is. Again, I'll put a label here. In fact, I could even say, you know, k equals, you um, give us the k. So here's the k, right? Again, I'll have to enter a formula now. So k is going to be the upper limit, so this value, so I'm going to put it in parentheses, minus the mean, which is 100. And I'm going to close that parenthesis up, and then I'm going to divide by the standard deviation. That's the formula for k, right? So I do that. And now it tells me k is 2 in this case. I don't like how this k is so far away. So I'm going to click this little right icon to align the cell right. So you can do that if you want. And you could even align this to the left. So it looks like those two are right next to each other. You can do that. That makes it look, you know, maybe aesthetically more beautiful. Okay, so there's my k equals 2. There's something wrong with my formula. You see it's giving me 0. And what this is uh, coming from is the fact that I actually need to put another parentheses here, right? So parentheses here. And then another parenthesis here. This way I square first before I do the work, right? Press enter, and there's my proper percentage. All right, the only thing I don't like about this is what if my, my numbers are a little bit different? Let's say I change this to not 15, but I change the standard deviation to 14.3. Now you're going to see I get this k that's a long decimal number, and my percentage is several decimal places long. What if I don't want that? What if I want to round and give like just to the tenths place? The way I can do this is I can highlight the cell where the formula is located, and I can come up here, going into the formula area where I can work on the formula, and I'm going to type in front of the equal sign there before the first parenthesis. I'm going to type the word round, and then I'm going to put an extra parenthesis. So the way you put this input in is you have to tell what number you want rounded, and that number is going to be this whole calculation, and then you have to put a comma at the end of it, and the next argument you have to include is how many digits you want it to round to. So I want to round to, say, you know, uh, two digits, right? So two decimal places now. And when you see the answer now, when I hit enter, I'm going to get 77.28. You may say, well, mm, I don't really like the extra. Let's do it to the tenths like I originally spoke about. I'll change it to one. Press enter, and there it is, 77.3. Okay, so that's calculated. And then lastly, I need to calculate this cell here for the at most. And this is actually quite simple. This is just going to be 100% minus the minimum percentage, right? Because if the interval contains a minimum of 77.3, then the maximum it can contain is 100 minus that. So I'm going to type 100 minus the answer I get from here. And this is what I'll have in this space. And again, these two should always add up to 1. They should always sum to 1 or 100. In other words, if they're written as percent the way they are here. Um, what if I accidentally put, you know, a number that isn't, uh, or an interval here that the values aren't, you know, suitable for the formula? Like, what's going to happen, for example, if I use um, 110 here as my upper limit? Right, and I press enter, you see I get these kind of nonsense answers, right? Answers that are impossible. And that's because Chebyshev's theorem, in, the k needs to be at least 1. So... Um, you can do certain things, for example. You can say, oh, what if I want to make this conditionally formatted? And what I mean by that is I'll click this here, and I can put a little warning here. For example, I can say, highlight this if the value for k is less than 1. So if it's less than 1, it's going to give me this error, right? So let's say I make this 130 again, like I had it before, right? Let's make the standard deviation 15 again. There we have it. See, so there's no red now. But anytime I pick an upper limit, that's not great. So for example, if I do 114, it's too small, right? 
And so it's giving me a little warning, right? And that's why this isn't correct, right? And I can even put a little note here, you know, to mention that, right? I could also put notes here to say, make sure that the interval is symmetric, or I could get rid of the lower, lower limit and I could simply put upper limit. So let's get rid of this lower limit for a second. I'm going to delete that. And then what I'm gonna do so I'm going to put in here lower limit. But I'm going to give us the lower limit automatically, right? So it's going to be something that's going to appear so that it isn't something you enter. And the upper limit will be all you need to enter. So let's say I say 130 again, and I get this nice answer. And I'm going to say that this is going to be the mean. It'll be the mean minus this many times the standard deviation. And that gives me the appropriate lower limit. Okay, so now I can test this out with different values. Let's say, for example, I wanted to look at the average height for men with a standard deviation of 2.8. And I want to say, well, you know, what percent of men are between um, 74 inches tall, right? It's going to automatically tell me my lower limit should be 62. It gives me my K and it tells me the minimum percentage between those two numbers and the maximum. So that's a nice version of the, the formula that you know, it gives you the opportunity to not only calculate the percentages, but it tells you what the interval should look like. You know, you're allowed to enter the mean and standard deviation. There's a little bit of safeguarding. We could make it more safe by preventing you from actually entering a value that's too low. You can now take this and put it inside of another Excel spreadsheet. There it is.